Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well, and that you're all having an incredible day. Likes, comments, and subscriptions are always appreciated. If you could leave in the comment section below what your favorite cryptocurrency is, that helps out the channel immensely. Welcome back to another News I Missed, where I go over News I Missed. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Cardano co-creator Charles Hoskinson is laying out a far-reaching vision of the future of crypto assets. In a new video update, Hoskinson told 315,000 people on YouTube that crypto projects like ADA could one day become the world's system of finance, but notes that the U.S. government needs to adopt favorable crypto regulations for this to ever become a reality. He said it's necessary for us to get to the next level. As many of you know, we want Cardano and cryptocurrencies in general to become the financial operating systems of the world, and my big passion in life has always been banking the unbanked and giving... Really? That's been your whole thing in life? His entire life he's wanted to bank the unbanked? Okay. And giving the unbanked economic identity that they control, that self-sovereign and ultimately global in nature, and ensuring human rights. Okay. The freedom of association, commerce, and expression. To accomplish that, there needs to be a regulatory regime that acknowledges the existence of cryptocurrencies. Well, I mean, every other country has already. We, we've gone over that s s several times for those of you who missed those videos. This was like a week ago. We were just talking about that. The only place on the planet that still has not done so is the U.S. So I feel like you could definitely go to another country that acknowledges the existence of crypto or even has 0% taxes, and you would you would just be just fine. Views them as a positive thing and appreciates the liberty that they provide people. But governments don't typically like liberty. That's not a, you know, fist in the air kind of thing. It's You're meant to live under their rule. That's the point of the government. They govern things for you. So the idea of liberty doesn't... Hoskinson goes on to raise concerns about the direction of China's digital yuan project saying that the project will compromise people's financial freedoms. It's really weird. Remember I mentioned before, and I know I keep using that phrase every single time, but the, the past always comes back uh, to haunt the cryptocurrency space. I was, I was saying something before. I wonder who owns a lot of these, these cryptocurrency news websites. I, I truly do wonder. I think it would be ridiculous to assume that there's no major companies with an ulterior motive somewhere who would also be owning one of these websites. There's one in particular, I can't remember the name, but I typically avoid their news in general. They keep posting like positive things about China's central bank digital currency, and it's like all the time. So remember last year, there were tons of articles about China's central bank digital currency uh, that they were doing like a, a, a giveaway of some sort, you know. He, he, you get a million, you get a million, but it was really this way. Like people were getting these like red envelopes filled with a card that gave them the digital currency. And then there was another news story from the same exact website and other websites that were talking about like how great this was going to be, the economic freedom for so many people. And then a couple of other places were also talking about like how great it was going to be for the country to use blockchain technology and to have another system that would allow people to enter the financial markets. And I'm like, Who's writing that? Who's writing that article? Because the entire idea of any government, nonetheless that one, creating a central bank digital currency is purely about control. For those of you who don't know how that country's systems work, everything runs through centralized servers. And I don't mean like how things currently are in your country. I mean, everything that gets put onto the internet that they own because they have their own internet is filtered and looked through by bots. Anytime you say something negative about the government or their policies, you get a fine, like an actual one. 
you can't say anything negative. Everything you get more points, that, like you know, to, to to be able to live, the more positively you talk about government policies and the things that they're done and the things that they're doing. If you hear at any point that there is under anyone who's undermining the rule of law or thinking for themselves, you can literally send a message in and get them in trouble. You can screenshot what they said or what they sent you. And that it's really completely insane how they run. So this is why I wish more people stood up against the idea of central bank digital currencies. Fiat currencies themselves are garbage, but there's nothing wrong with people using paper money if they choose to do so for their own privacy in life. If you choose to take out money or have cash in your hand so that when you buy things that you are going to be using in your daily life while you are on this earth, there's nothing wrong with that. Forcing everyone to simply use a digital system that is created by a government so they can track everything that you do so at the end of the year they can get you in trouble and say you should be paying more taxes when you didn't even know that you had to do that. That is wrong. And there are so many people, whenever we get news about any type of a country who's trying to make their own central bank digital currency, this has nothing to do with the ease of helping you make payments or to send money around the world rapidly or to make sure that you can send money to family members or whoever else might be in need. It's to control all every single aspect of you monetarily. Why do you think there's constantly such a big push to get people to use their phones or to, like, to pay things or to use your watch? Everything is tracked now. That's terrible. It should not be that way. We should have a system where you use something similar to cryptocurrencies or simply using cryptocurrencies because it's your money. Why does everything have to be tracked and traced that you do? It's illogical. It's just about control. All of it. Sorry for the tangent, but it's completely true. But this is the way that the world is rapidly moving to. Uh, he said, The representative from the People's Bank of China happened to do a presentation on the digital yuan, and it was very striking how sophisticated and already scaled the system is. 40 million users, 10,000 transactions per second, a quasi-account model, and a very, very tight coupling with some of the existing payment systems like WeChat, Alipay, these types of things. For those of you who don't know, I think there are three there are three apps that run uh, that entire country, basically. So WeChat is basically their Instagram, their Facebook, their any type of social media platform. That's it. Alipay from Alibaba. Basically, every payment goes through that. Every single payment. And these three things are also coupled onto one other uh, platform that everyone kind of uses. You are uh, encouraged to use them. So everything you say, everything you do, everything you book, everywhere you go is tracked and traced. Look into it. It's really, really fascinating. And the fact that anyone can ever be like, whoa, this is great. We need that system. Those people are evil, like actually evil. He said it is very clear that they are bundling social credit and their belt and road program with this digital currency. For those of you who don't know what the social credit is, that's the thing I was telling you about. You will get points. The, the, the more things that, that are seen as governmentally good. So they have cameras everywhere in the country. And if, if, if you are seen donating to a cause that will help the country, your credit score goes up. If you do not donate, if you jaywalk, if you are seen screaming in the street, there's a thousand and one things on this list. Your score actually goes down. If your score goes down too low, you can't use a high-speed train. You can't enter certain restaurants. You can't take a flights out of the country. Now imagine when there is an actual digital U.S. dollar and they implement the exact same thing. Well, I'm sorry. You've been convicted of so-and-so. I don't care if you didn't do it, but now you're on this list. You, you can't fly out of the country for the next five years. It's so insane that we're on this we're on this path and no one is really taking notice and no one seems to even care. No one's actually doing anything in opposition of this. Anyway, long story short, it's a very long article. Charles Hoskinson is basically saying that he hopes that crypto becomes the future. 
I think crypto has a very good future, but it takes the actual power of the people. People always forget that there is more of us than there are of them. This is a very common theme that has happened for thousands of years within humanity. People always forget the people who are in office are supposed to be working for us. We voted them in. Millions of people voted in one person. You work for the people. You do. We do not work for you. That's not how things are. Anyway, I would love if we lived in a utopia. I would live. I would live. I would. Lo- yeah, yeah, kind of. I would love if things were a lot better. But the current path that we're on is just fueled by greed, and the only people who are in office are sociopathic megalomaniacs. So maybe Mr. Hoskinson will get his uh his dream. But I doubt it. That's the Cardano news, kind of. Yeah. Look up all that stuff I was telling you about. Let's move on. Also in the news on Wednesday, the Bank of Canada highlighted five findings from a report that studied the dynamics of Bitcoin awareness and ownership from 2016 to 2021 using its Bitcoin Omnibus Surveys, or BTCOS. On the 12th of October, the Bank of Canada published a blog that highlighted five findings from this report, titled, Private Digital Crypto Assets as Investment? Question mark. Bitcoin Ownership and Use in Canada, 2016 through 2021. They said the share of Canadians owning Bitcoin rose from 5% to 13% in 2021, This increase occurred following widespread increases in the savings and wealth of Canadians during the time where we could not leave our homes. At the same time, some fintech companies began to offer cryptocurrencies alongside traditional investment products, providing consumers with a wider range of accessible and user-friendly platforms to buy Bitcoin. Keeping in mind, this is all coming directly from the Bank of Canada. Like This is a study from them. This isn't like an outside thing. The Bank of Canada was checking to see how many people actually are using and have been buying cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin in their country. The result of the survey also revealed that Bitcoin purchases in 2021 and 2020 in general relied increasingly on mobile apps to buy their Bitcoin. Purchasers use mobile apps much more than web-based exchanges, mining or visiting a Bitcoin ATM, end quote. I don't know anyone who... It's been at least... 75 years since I've heard anyone talking about using a Bitcoin ATM. It just seems weird and messy. You got to take money out of an ATM. You have to walk to a Bitcoin ATM. Uh, Some of them make you scan your face. And it's it's, it's just really, it's just not, it's not, it's not for me or anyone else that I know. I find it fascinating that so many banks, first of all, let's be honest with ourselves. We know that all the banks are already into crypto. But I like things like this, like kind of almost like an acknowledgement that more people are getting into crypto. There are a lot of uh, maths, I don't know what word you would throw in there, uh, where people are basically looking at the numbers and you can see year on year how many people are actually getting into Bitcoin, like how much the network expansion is increasing, how many more people have wallets, how many people have at least uh, a million Satoshis. We've seen those uh, metrics before in other videos. But now a lot of the numbers believe that within the next, I was it like five or six, like literally five or six years that there will be roughly near a billion people into crypto. It's kind of fascinating to think because I think current estimates roughly have us around 300 million people around the world. That's a huge number. Do you understand how staggering that is? That would, that would basically be everyone in the United States, roughly, roughly owning crypto. It's really insane to think about how far that we've come and still we're not even at a billion people. I'm sure we're at a billion people who know of the ecosystem, but there's not even a billion people who own crypto. Where are we when when it, when it's when it's 3.5 billion? Roughly the amount of estimated people who have access to the internet. What happens when everyone is into or has or owns crypto? Like how big will the market be? Very fascinating indeed. Uh, I guess 13% sounds accurate. I don't know if it's like one out of every nine people who I know here. I know a lot of people who own crypto, but I mean, I also kind of surround myself uh, with people who are into money because I told you that before. I had, I still have. We're still friends. A lot of friends who are not into money 
And conversations just don't go well with them. Like when you talk about like uh, profiting or making money and how much money you can make and like investing and stuff like that, uh, people who don't have money or who aren't into money, they don't they don't like those conversations. Anyway, that's the Bank of Canada ran a survey and found that around 13% of Canadians, one in every nine people owns crypto. And those are the people who actually, you know, said yes on the survey. Yeah. Let's move on. Also in the news, users can now purchase low-cost flight tickets using cryptocurrency by way of Binance Pay. Binance recently teamed up with Crypto Air Tokens in a collaboration. Users will be able to purchase flight tickets using Binance Pay as a result of the new partnership. They said, ready to book your dream vacation through Crypto Air tickets. And there's a little tweet for it right there. Users will have the option of reserving and paying for flight tickets using the cryptocurrency in their wallets. Thanks to the new partnership, users will be able to book flights through their marketplace as a result of the collaboration. This eliminates the need for any other flight booking apps. I don't know if it eliminates the need, but thank you very much for the service. Users gain access to over 1,000 airlines and over 9,000 destinations through Crypto Air Tickets Partnership. Users can eagerly, eagerly, users can easily log into their app and find Crypto Air tokens in the marketplace's mini apps section. Cool. Um, great. This is another uh, airline company that has partnered with another cryptocurrency company. We are on the uh, the 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 daily. Uh, Binance bus where there is Binance news every single day. It's either the coin burn, they've acquired a new company, they're buying something else, they've launched a new product or something with Binance Pay where some company has joined them to collaborate with them so that you can use cryptocurrencies directly from your account. It makes a lot of sense. I still wonder about the, the tax implications or lack thereof from using this, but it sounds kind of cool. That's the Binance partnering with Crypto Air Tickets news. Let's move on. In the most interesting news story of the day, for those of you who don't know Laura Shin, she runs a podcast. I believe it's called Unchained. I think that's it. I haven't listened to it in a very long time. There are very few uh, crypto podcasts that I actually like keep up with or really listen to because a lot of them, I found that my viewpoints don't align with a lot of them because they tend to be quite extreme in their idea that uh, only the people with money should have money. And that's all that I'll say. I believe in a more... Uh, equal future where we can all eat from the tree and it's not only the person uh, who sits next to the tree. I'll leave it that way. So she's one of the very few who I actually did listen to for a while. Uh, she recently interviewed, uh, his name is Do Kwon, D-O space K-W-O-N. And he is the, I believe the entire creator, I think that's what it's supposed to be, of Terra Luna. The last couple of months... He has been, I would say the word, missing. Uh, people do not know, still do not know where he is. And the speculation has grown quite rampant uh, because since Terra Luna's collapse, the project has been retaken by a brand new community. And beforehand, from what I read, because I didn't follow any of this before, apparently he was a bit abrasive, that is to say Do Kwan, and was writing a lot of not too nice things on his Twitter and social media. And I believe that this is the first interview that he was actually, that he actually agreed to, uh, and it gets quite interesting. So apparently, it says, this is the Do Kwan interview everyone was waiting for. In the latest episode of Laura Shin's Unchained podcast titled, it was never really about money or fame or success. The terror creator faces serious scrutiny. Do Kwan denounces media disinformation. 
denies several serious charges and gives a play-by-play -play explanation of the organization's movements during the crash. And he sweats bullets. I kind of want I'm, to... I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch it after. Laura Shin, for those... So I, I liked Laura Shin because she was always in the middle. You know, I, I try to be in the middle, but I end up ranting sometimes. She does very good work. She, like, she asks what needs, you know, what you need to hear. Did her homework and relentlessly put forward the questions most Terra investors have. And she does this in a non-threatening, extremely professional way, which I cannot do. Because I'd be all riled up. What did you do, bro? Do Kwan answers all of her questions. Some better than others. But the man does show his face and answers, which is a lot. Because he didn't have to do any of that. Compassionately. Laura Shin also gives Do Kwan a second opportunity to say sorry to Terra's affected investors and to their families. He would have come across much worse if she hadn't offered that second chance. It says Do Kwan, co-founder of Terraform Labs, discusses the, cha the charges against him, gives a message to Terra's victims, answers allegations about potential fraud and non-transparent business practices. I think I'm going to listen to this while I make lunch, not even joking. And here's the, I, I assume it was a it was a podcast, but also a video interview as well. Uh, one of the main things is that this it has been alleged that he is allegedly on the run, uh, to which he says no. He is not in his home country, uh, and people are wondering where he is. He says that he is not going to reveal that until he has been given a pass. And all of the information uh, freeing him from all the allegations has been reviewed and then processed and stuff like that. Very fascinating indeed. This is why I, I mentioned before in other videos as well. I wonder what this coin will be able to do. Not only without him, but in general. It has a lot of mud on its face. And I wonder if there's any kind of uh, comeback from all of this that's been going on. Uh, so yeah. This is one of the most popular news stories of the last couple of days. I'm interested to see exactly what he has to say because I just assumed that he would never show his face again. Even even the background of where he is is like a brick wall. Like no chances taken at all. That's the Terra founder. Do Kwan says the Terra Luna collapse was my responsibility alone news. Yeah. Let's move on. Also in the everyday news, crypto wallet BitKeep, that is bit and then keep, was hacked for over $1 million worth of Binance coin chain coins and Polygon-based tokens during early Asian hours on Tuesday. BitKeep supports tokens for more than 30 blockchain networks such as Ethereum, Polygon, Solana, and BNB chain and claims to have more than 6 million users. The wallet swap product was hacked early on Tuesday. They said our development team managed to contain the emergency and stopped the hacker. The team said in a tweet on Tuesday morning, adding that it will be compensating all users for their losses. At the time of writing, the swap service was paused to avoid further security breaches. This is in the everyday news all the time uh it is a i think the word shame is not even it anymore that this keeps happening i would like to believe now this is you know this is the weird part i would like to believe that these were simply random or haphazard or that it was simply someone sitting in a room with a dark hoodie on you know, you've seen the movies, uh, doing these actions, i.e. just one individual. Similar to the situation that we had earlier this year with the Terra Luna collapse and the stablecoin depegging and then Tether depegging and every other stablecoin depegging for a couple of hours or a couple of days and the other projects that disappeared. This feels targeted at this point. Uh, we had DeFi protocols for a while. I find it very weird now. Hear me out here. I find it very odd that a large number of banks, governments, institutions, countries, etc., etc., are now entering the cryptocurrency space. 
uh, trying to make their own stable coins, which a lot of banks are doing. And governments are trying to make their own central bank digital currencies, which lines up with why I believe the stable coins were attacked. We're now at the point where a lot of governments understand the strength or how popular DeFi platforms are. To be able to have access to money or to loans all the time is something very powerful. The idea of being able to use cryptocurrencies to transact in value at the drop of a dime whenever you want by downloading an application on the internet and having cryptocurrencies yourself, you don't understand the power of that. He who makes the money has the power. Banks have all the money because they create all the money. They create the power for themselves. We are normally obligated. If you want a loan, you have to go to the bank. You have to beg and plead to them, please, sir, may I have some more? And they give you unfair rates and terms because they make the rules. They have the power. They have the money. The idea of a DeFi platform is that you simply can use the platform yourself. You put up collateral, which you would normally have to do, and then you get the loan for what you need. De de decentralizedly, not a word, but you get what I'm saying. You're able to do this in a decentralized manner, and this, this, this in itself is also very powerful. The hacks have been happening every single day. I no longer, and even from the beginning, three in a row is like, whoa, dude, that's kind of crazy. Every day for the last six months, these are targeted. I would assume it's some kind of governmental body. I cannot say which one for sure. I would not be surprised. I've lived on this earth for a while. I know that people are terrible. I would not be surprised if it's multiple of them working together to try and get people to no longer trust these platforms. You've even heard me saying it before. I don't trust these platforms because there's constantly too much going on with them. Every single day, there's something. Every single day, there's a drain. There's an exploit. There's a hack. People lost $500 million. People are not going to be compensated for this. People are going it's, to... It's constantly... It's too much all the time. The only thing that will save the DeFi system is actual decentralization. Part of the problem is, is that many of... I don't know if this one is BitKeep in particular. I don't know and don't care what they do. The other platforms in particular have had problems where they're not decentralized. They actually come from a company who has an office in Switzerland somewhere and they run all the nodes, they run all the computing power, they run everything. We've seen that before where people try to take their money out and the protocol is down. The protocol is offline because the company rug pulled. They took the money away. They told you it was a DeFi platform and none of that has ever really been verified. So the news is, once again, for the 9,000th time this year, please try and remember that these protocols are not safe. I don't know if there's any platform that has not been targeted. I'm sure that it is going to be because that's, that's the general trend of everything that's constantly happening, but this is really bad. And people are losing their money that they have into this market that they maybe got from somewhere else. And yeah, it's very, very weird. This is clearly targeted for our market. Every single thing over the last couple of years, even ever since 2017, at the end of 2017 and the beginning of 2018, remember where we had about 15 countries over the course of a week. It was a week. It was seven days where they all kept on announcing oh, back to back that they were either going to ban or get rid of crypto. It caused prices to fall. It was extremely coordinated. All this stuff keeps happening over and over. Whenever people keep creating these new coins and these new forks and stuff like that, and they tell you and they lie to you, this is the new coin, this is the new so-and-so, this is the new thing to buy, this is the new... And people fall for it, and then they disappear a week later. What was the other coin that was supposed to be the, the, the one that got rid of Solana? It launched, it went to $100, and then fell down to $8. Who do you think made out like a bandit? The people who told you that it was going to go up in price. So, as always, try to protect your funds. Uh, if you made money and don't plan on saving, I mean, don't 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 plan on spending that money or saving that money. Uh, put it onto a ledger. Put it onto something that you know it's it's cold. It is offline, so that you can keep your money safe. 
because this is going to continue happening. More people are going to continue losing their money. There will be the the silver lining for people losing their money is that people do learn from these exploits. The people creating these things and people who actually make them decentralized enough will figure out how to make them safer. But it comes at the expense of this happening every single day. It's really nuts. So I hope no one had their money there. And if you have your money on any DeFi platform, uh, have a long discussion with yourself as if you if you want to keep your money on there or if you want to take a portion of what you have to make sure that you don't lose everything should something bad happen because this is happening all the time now. That's the BitKeep wallet uh, was drained of a million dollars in an exploit news every single day. Yeah. Let's move on. Right. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all have a great day, great morning, great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Is that a wolf? What is that? Thank you all once again for watching, listening, commenting, subscribing, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.